All right, all right, all right. Guys, today I'm putting you guys on absolute game. Um, ski mask and sea goggles because I'm in Swiss Alps and we're skiing. So this is needed. But let me get to the point. Today, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to close your first growth operator client and our exact sales script, $10,000 sales script. This is not cap, by the way. If you want an actual breakdown of an exact sales script to where you use for your growth operator business, and you don't want to offer some basic community, right? Just by watching this video, I literally guarantee you, if you hop on any call, these people will close. If you follow this, every single person is going to close, right? Now, some proof, 50K, right? You guys wanted to fucking see the proof. You wanted to see the stripes. You wanted to see it. The proof is right here, right? This shit actually works. Now, additionally, oh, it's too hot. I can't do this. Ah, doesn't work every time. And it, anyways, not only do you use this framework for your own agency, right? But for your actual clients. So if you have clients that have closers where you're gonna place a closer, or you're gonna close for them, or they're gonna close, or you need it for your agency, right? Basically, any agency owner, growth operator, whatever it is, you're trying to close a deal with a creator, with anyone, right? This is the video to watch. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we do it. And I'm gonna break it down to the simplest step because I'm probably as retarded as you are, right? I'm typically used to be very slow, right? Now it's getting a little bit better. But this is what I needed to understand what to do on sales calls, right? And now when we hop on with creators that are qualified, people that we actually wanna work with, we close about 70% of them, right? So let's just start with the breakdown immediately right now and get straight into it. The number one thing a sales script is breaking down into two phases, right? So every sales script is working out to two key components. One, discovery, and two, bridging to the pitch of the close, right? Now, everyone talks about rapport, da 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 they tell you what to talk about, but right now, I'm gonna give you guys literal step-by-step, step. I'm gonna show you right now, look. It's literal step-by-step, step, and I'm gonna give you the exact questions you ask them. And I'm gonna give you for every single part an example of a scenario and a question, right? So let's just start with discovery, very simple, right? When you're doing discovery, guys, all you're basically doing, right? Let me make sure my OBS is recording or I'm gonna actually shoot myself. Perfect. All you're doing in discovery is you're taking your prospect from a zone of resistance to a zone of intent, right? You've been on sales calls. You start talking to someone and you feel the resistance on the call, but you don't know how to break that down and put them in a zone of intent, right? And that's why you're not closing deals. So we do this by building rapport. We ask them specific questions, right? About them, their business. We label them with a problem. We overview their current state, desired state, and the consequence to not, them not taking action and making a change, right? And this is the exact discovery process. It's going to allow you to segue perfectly into a pitch and close, right? Because you've been on these calls. You've tried to pitch someone. And it feels awkward. They don't want to stay on the call. You're like, ah, it's so salesy. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Show you guys the uh, twizzy riz, right? So discovery, part one is a report, right? But this is not just some basic report. Objective report is to basically earn the right to ask them direct questions, right? All we do in report is we want them to allow us to then ask them more personal and more business related questions later without them taking offense to it or without, without them feeling like we're coming at them, right? So it's not, we're not here to do a bunch of small talk, right? They can smell a sales rep. A lot of people we're talking to have spoken to closers. They've spoken to setters. They've done all of that, right? So the way we do that is we throw off their scent with something called threading, right? One of our top mentors taught us this and it's killer, right? Then you build just genuine report, just talk it out with them. And you, I promise you, you're gonna gain more trust. So by the way, report building shouldn't take more than a few minutes. You're not here to re build a report for like 10, 15 minutes. It's not the point, right? You wanna find a nice balance between, hey, becoming a bit of their friend and at the same time being an expert, right? So. In a matter of seconds, the goal is to just seem like an expert on the call and you don't want them to be thinking like, oh, this guy's another friend and they're never gonna buy from you. So when you talk about threading, the goal of threading is to create a naturally flowing conversation that just doesn't seem forced. You don't want it to be forced, right? So how do we do this? We give, we give prospect a, a bit of a bait to kind of just pull on, right? So I'm gonna give you an example of how some of our calls might go and how I might carry some of these calls, right? So they might say, hey, um, how's your day been, right? You saw the conversation, how's your day been? And then usually people say, hey, man, it's good. I'm doing well. It's fine. Um, you know, good day, good day, good day, right? But what you do is you say, hey, look, not the best, man. Um, 
had around like a hundred emails right now. We have a proposal to send out. Uh, been traveling a bunch, and it's just back and forth. I think in the past eight, four weeks, I've taken about eight flights. Um, it's been a he- been it's been a bit hectic, just to say the least, right? You do that, and that's gonna make them feel like, all right, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. It's not the typical like, oh, I'm good, 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 and it's gonna kind of throw off their scent because you're basically telling them like, hey, sh- stuff is not going that well, right? This works every time, by the way. It works for us every single time. So now we thread it, right? Now we move to the agenda, right? So how do you set agenda is basically you want to set it to know how the call is going to go. During that time, you don't stutter, relax, and you set the agenda with confidence, right? The the best way to position it is in their own interest, right? So you want to get them to talk about themselves. You want to get them to chat about themselves. People like to talk about themselves, right? And this is also going to decrease sales resistance. So again, the main goal still here is to remove sales resistance. We did it with threading, but now we're doing it with the agenda, right? So typically, it can go like this. Um, so typically, you know, how I like to structure these calls to work best for you is if you could give me a quick rundown of what you do and what motivated you about the call. Now, we set the agenda by putting the call in their best interest. Say, hey, to work best for you. And then we ask the buying trigger question after what motivated you to put the call, right? But since it's in the same phrase, right? People, it doesn't trigger them as much, right? Because it just flows into the phrase and they just, what they hear first is what do you do? So they'll talk about what they do, but they still are aware of what motivated you to put the call, right? And the thing is, this might sound crazy to you, but this guy tells us one of my mentors, is the human brain can't actually process a lie that fast. So they won't even realize if they won't get triggered, that sales resistance is not going to hit, right? And it's going to be way easier for you to get context and to actually move forward with the call, right? So now, next step, you want to clarify, why are they even on the call, right? It's very simple. Just you're asking them, hey, what more of you book the call, like I said? And then when this happens, right, you're going to take, I don't have a pen, right? I have a lip balm. Take a pen or a computer, whatever you're doing, and take a note of what they tell you it is that motivated them to book the call. Now, the one mistake everyone makes is whenever someone says, hey, this is why I booked the call, they automatically leverage it against the client or the, whoever the prospect is. So what happens is automatically the prospect is thinking, right? Whenever I give this guy a problem, he uses it against me, right? This guy is a rep. I don't like them, right? So what you want to do is just write it down and you want to keep this for later on the call. Okay, this is one of the most important parts. And now, honestly, quick situation, qualifying questions, nothing crazy, right? The whole goal here is just to ask specific questions to gauge if the prospect is a good candidate for the offer. Are they actually a fit? So depending on where your ICP is, um, they need to have a high ticket offer. They need to charge maybe 5K minimum. They need to have whatever it really is that you need them to have, ask the questions, right? So here's an example of qualifying questions. How much is your program? What's your current system? Whatever that is, I'm not gonna go through all of them. Here's an example of them, screenshot it. If you guys want the doc, I'll give you, you'll be able to access the doc later. Uh, I'll let you know about how you can access the doc, but for the moment, focus on this and use however much, a little time span of attention span you have in your brain to watch the video and go all the way, right? So now, some qualifying questions. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna find out the goal, right? So find out how um, what their goal is, so you can leverage it if you, again in the call, again, because the last time you asked them an important question, you didn't leverage it against them, they're now slowly moving into an actual zone of intent. And they know that if they give you the goal, you're not gonna immediately use it on them. This works every time, please, just try it, okay? And just figure out, yeah, why is, you know, why is it that important to them? Why is reaching that goal so important? You guys know the shebang, and then uncover their desires, right? So for example, keep it simple. Hey, okay, gotcha, and what's the goal for the coaching business over the next 90 days? You know, da, 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 da. okay, what about the revenue? And then, you know, oh, how come that revenue specifically? All that BS, right? And now we're going to go over extraction, right? So you'll notice during the tactical extraction phase of the script, we leverage their goal to figure out their challenge, right? Again, we're still not using it against them. We're still not saying, hey, da, 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 right? And so now, for example, when it comes to extraction, the whole goal of this phase is we want to dig into their surface level problems and make them feel emotional impact of their problem. People only buy a product if they feel the emotional impact of the problem and they recognize the solution. They have to feel it. They have to 
be thinking about it for them to think about, okay, oh, shit, it's actually hurting me this bad. It's, damn, it's actually taking this long. Damn, this guy knows what he's talking about. Go. Right? And so you want, you have to make them feel the pain. Right? But what people struggle with is that sometimes you hop on a call, right? I'll give you an example. And you try to ask the prospect the painful questions. But they don't give you anything. And the reason why they don't give you anything is because there's still no zone of resistance and you're not building trust with them properly. Anytime they give you a pain, you're using it against them from the beginning of the call. That's what I, we always say to wait, right? And we just want now, because we have them in a zone of intent, slowly going to a zone of intent, and we've built the trust, we can ask them these more painful questions, right? So for example, let's say a client's lost 250K in qualified pipeline. You know, we're not able to guarantee them a higher conversion on their pipeline. So whatever pain they're going to give you, right? You're going to understand what offer you can give them um, on the back of it, right? So the whole goal here is to just make the prospect feel a deep impact or problem, a deep emotional um, impact. And what I want to bring up here before I go into the example is that, and by the way, this, this is a full example I'll go through right now, is that when someone trusts you, they're way more open to actually going deep on their problems. And the deeper they go on their problems, the better of an offer you can make them, right? And this is the best thing you can do. When you're going to pitch the offer, right, you can tailor it to their pains and so that's why it's so important to build that trust and really take them from a zone of resistance to a zone of intent, right? So I'll go through it right now. So in extraction, this is typically how it's going to go. So yeah, gotcha, man. Just to make sure on the same page, on the form, you put your guys, you know, are doing X amount. Is that correct? Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So, so what's been your, you know, what's been your main bottleneck? Um, you say when you're, you know, reaching your target revenue. Um, da -da 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 -da. You know, hey, they talk about it. Yeah, I've been there before. Build reliability. I've been there before. Da, da, da. And now you want to establish the impact of the problem. So, for example, we'll say, gotcha. You mentioned X situation. Tell me a bit more about that and how's that, how's that been impacting your business, right? X situation is the goal they told us before that we still haven't used. And this is when we use it, once we build trust. And when I say it this way, it still doesn't feel like I'm coming at them. And we still have that trust built up. Right, then you can say, "Hey, has been has this been impacting revenue badly? You know, do you have any metrics that support this as well? Has your revenue dropped? Right? We go over metrics and data because we want to show that we're data based. Right? Revenue drop by how much? How long has this been impacting your business? Let's say they say six months. Wow, six months. Right? So so far you've lost about X amount of revenue because of X problem. Yeah. So." You know, have you looked in any additional help before with X pain point or not? I say, they say yes or no. If not, why not? Right. And then, hey, here, what you do, this works all the time is, hey, I don't want to make any assumptions here, but um, just to make sure we're on the same page, you're struggling with X problem and it's causing you to get X negative impact on the business. So you're looking to solve this ASAP. Does that sound right? Yes. Now that you know they're looking to solve this ASAP, Right, which most likely they will. If you can get them in a zone of intent, they will. Now we move to KPI questions, right? So here we want to understand the specific details on their metrics. So why do we kind of do this? Because we want to show the prospects that we're very focused on data, right? And we don't just make assumptions, but we mainly focus on data-based decisions, right? And you want them to feel that because they want you to be the logical thinker here, right? And what this does here is it helps you build more context as to how their operations look like and how you can help them improve. So when you make your offer at the end, you can use these KPIs, right? And by the way, when, when you ask these questions, it's important to sound genuine, right? Sound curious. When I'm going to work with a coach, by the way, like I ask them, like, I'm genuinely curious, like, hey, like, how many, like, how many people are opting to the email, right? Uh, what, what, what does the open rate look like? How many DMs are you guys getting a week? Okay, if you guys are getting X amount of DMs, um, What's the, how many of them are getting booked? What's the percentage of people that are, are, are being booked on a call? Okay, how many of them actually show up? Okay, so X percentage, X percentage, X percentage. And you see how I seem actually curious and I seem like I actually care. And when you do that, they understand, okay, he's asking the right information, right? He's asking about the right data. This guy seems like I can trust him, right? So for example here, I cannot say how many inboxes are you getting per week. Like, like, like I was telling you guys off the top of my head. What's your average deal value, right? If you had to put a number on it, how many hours per week are you currently spending to manage the process, right? Who's on your team right now? So ask these specific KPI questions, 
because that's what's going to give you the information you need to then make a really good offer at the end, right? So now we get into um, a desired state, basically vacation questions, right? So here, the only objective is that, by the way, let's just summarize real quick. At this point, right, we've done discovery, we built report, we've built trust, we set the agenda, it's very clear what's going to happen, clarify why they're on the call, quick situation, qualifying questions, then we go in to find out their goal, we extract even more data, right, we, we kind of touch on that pain of if, if they do it or not do it, you know what's going to happen, and here with KPI questions, we get even more data for our offer, and we also increase our status delta, right, and so now, get a bit more to the nitty gritty stuff, right? So here the only goal is to find out where, you know, where do they want to be, right? What's the place, like, where do they want to get to revenue-wise, whatever that is, that's going to make them feel like they're on top of the world, right? And we do that so we can then leverage the consequence of them not taking action as the next phase of the script, right? Like I said, every time we get information, we wait and we use it later, right? To build that trust. So... Now, we want them to paint us a clear picture, right? So maybe for, for, B2B, for B2B services, you don't want to get too creative. Just ask vacation questions based on their you know, business metrics and KPIs. If it's a coach, you might be able to get more into emotional questions, right? So now you're going to ask them, hey, if you were able to leverage X mechanism so you can do X, what would you want your business to look like then? And then you ask them, hey, how many inbound leads would you want to see every single day, right? For us, inbound leads matter, matter a lot because them getting inbound leads changes a lot for them right? How many clients would you be open to, you know, to look into onboard per month? How much time would you want freed up for yourself? Whereas the business would, you, what areas in your business would you put that freed up time, energy, and money towards, right? I'm not going to go all these questions, but this is a good set of questions to ask to understand, hey, what is your dream outcome, right? And after that, you now get into consequence questions, right? And this is super important because the objective here is to, the objective of this question is to send the prospect to an emotional roller coaster of the ultimate high and then what it might feel like to do now, right? How is it going to feel all the way up there? So they're talking about it. They're saying all this. It's like, hey, what happens if you don't make a change, right? And we find out exactly what's going to not gonna what's going to happen if they don't take action, right? If you build trust correctly and you follow these framework, this will work so well, right? And this is really going to open up all the negative consequences of not taking action. So, for example, and, okay, gotcha. Um, and I'd assume if you weren't, you know, to fix X problem and continue doing X, what would that mean for the business if you were to keep doing that? All right? And now they'll basically tell you the issues. And now what you do is something we call widening the gap. Again, one of our mentors tells this, right? You can't help someone if they don't admit they need help, right? So during this, this time, right, this time of the call, we're creating a gap in their ego, right, where the prospect actually admits to need the help because of the problem. This still needs to seem very genuine and natural when asking these questions, right? Guys, I keep on saying this, but you need to legitimately be curious, right? A lot of people will tell me, oh, Dream Miner says you need to be curious. You need to actually be curious. If you're going to work with someone, right, whenever I work with someone, whether it's mentorship, whatever that is, mentorship, clients, B2B, whatever that is, I'm actually curious, like, what's going to happen if we don't do this, right? What are your metrics like? What's going on? Like, who's on the team? I actually want to know this information. I'm not asking it because I want to trick them. I genuinely want to understand, like, where can I help? Where can I help? What puzzle? You know, I always see it as there's a big puzzle, right? And I can see the different holes in the puzzle. And if I can see the different holes, I know what pieces I should pick. Right. And that's how I see it. And that's why here we want to figure out, right, why us, right? And why not should they just not just do this on their on their own? And the only way we could do that is if we have enough information and if we build that trust. Right. And at this point, if you do this right, the prospect is gonna start selling himself to you. Right? And obviously, you can just soften up a lot of stuff right now by just complimenting them and you can compliment them and then leverage your question in a nice way. So, for example, you can say, hey, well, a quick question that I have, right? And you can seem very genuine. Well, quick question that I have is, you seem like a pretty smart guy. So, like, why us? Why us? Like, why not try this yourself? Right? 
And that's when they'll really go into, hey, why they want to work with you, what they know about, how the call went, and everything like that, right? And now you want to move into commitment. So commitment, you need to lock the prospect into making a verbal commitment to change, right? This is really important. They need to speak things, right? They might think about it, but you need to get them to say it out loud, right? So, for example, reversing verbal commitments, right, is always harder to people since they don't want to let themselves down, right? A lot of times they don't want to actually say it. But if you build trust well, you follow the process, it'll be possible, right? So we want pretty much the prospect to pre-handle all their future objections for us right now by getting them to basically to say why they need to start now. So then they'll call if they have objections, you're still writing notes down. If they have objections, you can leverage as to why they want it to start now and kind of get back to these, right? So for example, this is what it'll look like. Okay, gotcha. And um, is having someone like us to automate this process for you so you can do X goal important for you right now? Right? And then they say yes or no. Most likely at this point, guys, they'll say yes. Right? If you have curiosity, you build good trust, you follow the process, they'll say yes. And now you can pretty much very easily bridge to pitch. Right? So prospect is now in the zone of intent and he's ready to be pitched. So you can ask for permission, right? Because you can now just let, let the prospect know that, hey, he's a good fit ask for permission to actually share. And you can pretty much just like leverage the friendship you guys kind of built up together. Um, you can ask scarcity, curiosity, whatever, everything in here all into the example right now. So this is how it would go, right? Okay, awesome. Everything here mentioned aligns our service. So first, like, thanks for the insights. Um, we have a really solid setup here, but one downside of having something super robust is that it's never mass market. I've noticed like the business that we try to work with, everyone typically... Um, get mediocre results or bring their customers, which is why we're very selective with the specific specific type of clients we work with. So we can work with fewer clients while increasing our overall efficiency. I say that to say, the problem you have with pretty much X is essentially what we're built to solve. So let's say for example, so rather than me asking you more questions, I'm happy to take you through you know who we are and how this actually works and see if it makes sense to set this up for you. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds good, cool. Let me know if you can see the screen, go through the pitch deck. When you go through the deck, don't go too fast, take it slowly, every page you go through, answer any questions they have, ask them if they have questions, right, understand. When you're on the call, try to see how their facial expression is moving. They get a bit tense, they get a bit tight, if they're nodding, if it's not looking good or if they start looking like this, ask them questions. Hey, do you have any questions, right? Pretty much temp check, like I just said, drop price, and then basically at this point, just handle objections if there are even any, and that's pretty much it, right? Now, if you want to guys want to get access to a copy and paste sales script, which is what we have here for all the guys that work with us, if you want the word for word sales script uh, attached above, um, so it can basically just help you um, with the objections you might face, specifically for you know growth partnerships and growth operators. Uh, we recently reopened our one-on-one -on -one, uh, growth partner membership program. So our students, they get our word-for-word -word sales script, each of them, in some cases, even our pitch decks, where they're able to leverage our own results to close more deals, right? So we've had students make 26K per month, 20K per month. We've had some close, go from charging 2.5K a month, 10K a month, uh, and it goes on and on, right? And we've even been able to generate for growth partner businesses. And we, yeah, we've been able to help with growth partner businesses, even our own clients um, that have generated 70, 80, even sometimes 100 grand a month, right? So at this point, guys, if you guys are looking like to actually get help one-on-one -on -one support um, from us, this is pretty much what it would look like. We guarantee you a creator deal worth 10K per month in only 90 days, right? The market right now is very untapped. As much as you think it's very tapped because of all the growth operators, they're just selling communities, right? This is very possible. And additionally, we'll even help you source and close the deals with you and for you, right? This sounds crazy. Xander joined a couple of days ago. He already closed a 25% revenue share deal on his very first day in our mentorship. Adrian, which I'm actually having dinner with in like 20 minutes, closes his creator within a week, 36K followers. He launched yesterday. He booked 10 calls the first day and they already closed a 3K deal today. So if you actually want one-on-one -on -one hands-on uh, mentorship and you want actual help, you want to have WhatsApp access to us, 24-7 access, um, then you can book a call below.
leave below. And if not, look, just come on my Instagram, ask me any questions. I'm very open to it. Uh, whenever I have time, whenever I'm doing anything, uh, if I'm not skiing, by the way, um, you guys can ask me your questions on IG, right? So look, we'll talk soon. Uh, if you guys want access to this doc, DM me doc or sales on IG, Twitter, whatever it really is. Um, and I can send it over to you guys. Again, really go over this again, follow the process step by step. And there's literally no way that you guys don't close deals. Um, this is pretty much guaranteed to, to, fuck, to freaking work. So that's it, guys. That's it for me, guys. Uh, by the way, I appreciate the recent support. I think we're up like 200 subs in like a week or something. It, it's absolutely cracked. In like two weeks, uh, it's cracked. And uh, I'm going to try to keep on coming to you guys with more and more value every single time. Um, this time it was goggles. Who knows what it's going to be next? Up to you to find out. So, yeah. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right, all right, all right.